In Moore County, North Carolina, Southern Pines, Pinecrest High School has an auditorium named after Robert E. Lee, but it's not what you'd expect. We interviewed 191 Pinecrest students about the origin and purpose of the name during third and fourth lunch on April 2nd, 2019. One third of students wrote that they didn't know why it was named that way. One third of students thought that it was named after the Confederate general. 18.3% put other incorrect answers. Only 13.4% of students put the correct answer. Moore County Superintendent. This auditorium is not named after the Confederate general. It's named after the superintendent who desegregated Moore County schools. But the next generation doesn't know his story. In a digital era where the memorialization of the Civil War is in the national spotlight with statues being torn down in Winston-Salem, Chapel Hill, and Durham, concerns about the auditorium's name are resurfacing. This is not the story of Robert E. Lee, the Confederate general. This is the story of Robert E. Lee of Moore County and how over his 26 year tenure, he reshaped our entire education system, consolidating and integrating our schools. Robert E. Lee, not that one. My father came from Virginia. He was born in Isle of Wight County, and the town was Franklin, Virginia. It's near Norfolk, Virginia. Um, his father was a Methodist preacher, and his mother was had her master's degree in religious education. They met at Duke University, which was Trinity at the time. Every four years, they changed churches, which the Methodists do. So he was always wanted us to stay in one place, and he decided on Moore County in 1946. Came to Aberdeen High School and by default got the girls basketball team. They assigned it to him, but he decided he would make the best of it. So he gathered the girls that wanted to play and he said, do you want to win? He said, I want to know if you want to win. And I don't, it probably can't do this now, but um, if they wanted to play with him, he would take the, he would buy them a basketball goal and a basketball goal, a uh, basketball to shoot at home. He wanted to win, and he did. And I believe that he won 10 conference championships in a row. And then he wanted to get a state championship because he knew he had a team that could compete, and he did. He had to go argue before the state general assembly to get the women to go past a regular season because they thought their organ, their reproductive organs would be harmed. And he had to prove that they wouldn't or argue that they wouldn't and they gave him the permission to have the first women's high school basketball team. In fact, I think in 2006 or seven, he was inducted into the national, I mean the North Carolina Athletic High School Hall of Fame. But then in 1959, he became superintendent of Moore County Schools. And at that time there was Pinehurst City Schools, Southern Pine City Schools, and Moore County Schools. There were uh, somewhere between 15 and 20 different school districts in Moore County in the late 50s. They started the integration thing a little bit in the late uh, 50s when uh, Bob Lee became uh, superintendent. Moore County would do it on their terms and not the terms of the federal government. So they wanted to be out in front of the mandated, which I think Wilmington decided they would wait and they had problems. The daddy had a really good board of education that helped him a lot and they decided that they would desegregate the schools. But the people by and large were not for it. He would come home 
and be very quiet because he would go in homes where there were dirt floors. You know, there were, and he, he just wanted these, um, everybody to have, he thought it, education was an equalizer. So he started and he got a lot of bad feedback from certain people and he would go downtown and people would walk across the street not to speak to him. He, um, so he was, he was having a hard time, but it wasn't only daddy, but he had Jerry McKeithen and other people that this was happening to, Voight Gilmore, I think Felton Cable was helping at the time. Um, so there was a lot of animosity, but there was also a lot of help. We were holding a meeting over here at Union Pines, leaving the meeting. Some lady grabbed my lapel, nose right in my face, and said, forgive me again. Don't let them in our school. And the thing that a lot of people did to try to avoid uh, integration was something called busing. Bob Lee said, and this is a good true phrase I heard him say. I'm going to stop hauling little black children past white schools. One night we were up in our bedroom and daddy came up to me and said, I don't want you to worry, but if something happens outside, I want you to go to this closet and don't come out to hear my voice. There may be a cross burn in the yard and there's a sheriff that's gonna be spending the night. He took us over there and showed us. I was never scared because daddy was bigger than life to me. I was born in 1961. So when I was in the first grade, I was in the first class by law that had to be integrated ahead of, of what the uh, Supreme Court decided. Moore County had an optional year where you could come in if you wanted to and be in part of the white school system. And then the year that I came in, it was fully integrated. So I didn't know anything different. He was the right man at the right time because his morals, he, he had a moral compass that was true. And he stayed on that moral compass that it was just the right thing to do, the right thing for the children of Moore County. That was all his, always his saying, is it right for the children of Moore County? Then we're gonna go after it. Okay. My father loved sports. One of the things he also loved was hunting. He grew up hunting. His father taught him to hunt quail early. And uh, he had a lot of friends around here he liked to go hunting with. And one day, uh, he, he would usually go into a store and get a Coke and some crackers and meet some friends in some of the local stores. And when some of the people found out what he was doing when he was trying to integrate the schools early, um, when he walked in the store, everyone had pre-planned to turn their backs to him, and they did. They all faced the wall, and some took papers and pretended they were reading the paper and faced the wall. And uh, he asked how they were doing, but he didn't have a response. So he finally just said, I see how it is, and now I know where we stand, and, and he left. But he didn't let that bother him, and he didn't have a list that he kept of people he didn't like. And later they came around and became friends and supporters of him, but that's the type of thing that he would run into uh, during the bad days. He went and I think they had a vote in Southern Pines and Pinehurst schools came into Moore County schools. And he continued to be superintendent, which was unusual. Usually they lost their job if there was mergers like that. And that was the year in 1969 that Pinecrest was built. I never really understood it because I was off at college at the time. But I know that he was going after children being educated at their own pace. That was, and they were offering things in the consolidation that the single, like Aberdeen, Southern Pines, Pinehurst couldn't offer. If you brought the schools together, they could um, offer more foreign languages, more of almost everything, but he was excited about people going at their own pace. Um, so he was very, always very excited about Pinecrest.
in to my understanding in Sand Hills, the community co uh, college concept was was going around in the state, maybe the General Assembly, I'm not sure about that. But they wanted to know how viable it would be for Moore County and the surrounding areas to have a community college. So they asked Daddy if that he thought it would sustain it. And he thought, he said, of course, he would love to have something like that. But his task was to get a survey of all the superintendents around the area to ask if they thought their students would come to a community college in support of community college. And to my understanding, it was overwhelmingly yes. Six to one in favor of the taxes to pay for the college and the schools. I think for the college particularly, it was about nine to one. Uh, you just don't find communities voting for tax increases that are that uh, favorable for increasing the taxes. I often ask, you know, did she do this on purpose to you? Because <laughs> it's the whole name, Robert Edward Lee. And she said, no, no, it just happened that way. But no, there was no, no, it just happened that that was his name. He had to live with it his whole life. <laughs> What you're doing right now is a really good step towards that. Um, if you could make it part of your orientation program, because when they walk on campus and see that, I understand exactly why they might feel that way. But if it's part of the, or if whatever you're doing is part of orientation, so they know coming in before the first day of school exactly what it is, maybe they won't feel that way if they understand what this man's sacrificed for them to have the school system they have. Um, I agree with my sister. I think what you're doing is very important because they're, they're going to see that name on the auditorium. Um, but I, I think I understand it like my sister, but if anyone ever knew him, uh, they wouldn't feel that way at all. Um, the name on the auditorium, uh, I commented when to my wife, Tamara, when we went to the opening of the auditorium, when I saw that it saw, said Robert E. Lee, I thought that that could be a problem someday. I didn't think it would be at the time, but I thought I foresaw that really. Everybody we knew called him Bob except his mama. His mom always called him Robert, but um, I think he was known as Bob Lee. He was a yeah. That's how that's how everybody in church and referred to him. I, I wouldn't have a problem with Bob Lee Auditorium. It wouldn't bother me. I mean, it was, you hate to think somebody's name wasn't good enough or something, but I had, you know. Um, I wish that, that they had to put R. E. Lee. That's what he went by. It, that's how he signed every report card. When, before the computers, my father actually signed every report card of every student in the county. And he didn't sign it Robert E. Lee, he signed it R. E. Lee. One day, um, I had lived in Nashville, Tennessee, and I had come home. Um, I was laid off, and so I came back home, and I was helping a brother of mine who, who was a paint contractor, and I was helping him during the day. 
and we got word that the house was burning down. Their house was, and by the time I got there, uh, it was almost gone. And uh, I was, this is this kind of tells you who my father was. Um, I was upset because I had moved and, and things I owned were in the house that were burning. And I was a young man and I didn't have a whole lot. And what I had was in the house. But I looked at my father who was losing more and, and he was laughing. And they were talking about burning marshmallows and getting some, you know, they were just having fun with the house burning down. And um, it, it ashamedly, it rubbed me wrong. So I grabbed my father and I took him to the side. I said, Daddy, what's funny? I said, your house is burning down. And uh, he said, well, Edward, I'm not happy that my house is burning down. He said, but once I got here, I started taking inventory and said, your mom's not in there. None of my five children are in there and my dog's not even in there. The way I see it, I've got everything. And uh, so he shamed me, <laughs> but he did it in a loving way. And he he's always was teaching. He was a teacher. 